Good evening. I'm here with uh, Mr. Piers Corbin, renowned astrophysicist of very high calibre, and uh, I'm going to ask him a few questions, starting with what you're doing at the moment, Piers, well, here in London. Um, I'm also a campaigner against all the attacks on our rights happening now from the World Health Organisation and the World Economic Forum. Um, and I would say, really, what we've got is a creeping fascism around the world. Um, not just about what's happening in Gaza, but that is, you know, really horrible that all of these things come together from the same source. Specific things in Britain now, we got a schools bill in Parliament which is taking away uh, rights of children from families, essentially, mm -hmm. and it's like what happened in Nazi Germany. Yeah, yeah. Second thing to note, we got the uh, Climate and uh, Nature Bill, so-called, uh, which is going to come up in Parliament on the 24th of January. Now, this thing is unbelievably bad, uh, and it's been promoted by Greenies as something progressive. Mm -hmm. But it's, I would say it's a new green fascism. I mean, they want to phase out all fossil fuels. Well, that means you won't be able to drive your car, or you'll have to have an electric car, which you can't afford. Um, it'll be monitoring your carbon footprint everywhere, and that will go along with uh, digital currency, so they can turn you off if you start spending on the wrong things. I mean, you know, this is really dangerous. Mm -hmm. um, they want to get rid of air travel, so you won't be able to have any more holidays. I mean, it's about total control and exploitation. Yeah, keeping people in a prison, basically. So we've got to oppose this completely. Um, and uh, you will be, well, we'll be dealing with that in various ways, but hopefully we'll have some protests outside buildings, and on the 18th of this month there's the big Gaza demo, we'll be there supporting that, but you see, that's all part of creeping fascism, so we should also say, look, we've got to oppose all these fascistic attacks, including this green nonsense. Um, so then, presumably you want to, Talk, we want to yeah, talk so about yeah, the, uh, if you can just, the question behind yeah, all this. Yeah, just talk, tell us all about the Grand Solar Minimum and, uh, and the geoengineering yes. scams, etc. You know, I'll, I'll let you talk all about it. Okay, very important. Yeah. Right, the um, Grand Solar Minimum is when solar activity gets lower and lower, and that is changing climate, and we'll talk about that in a second. But first of all, about geoengineering. Let's be clear that what people think about geoengineering is greatly exaggerated. The powers that be want to be able to control weather, climate, everything, but they can't. They're doing little things that you can make it rain or not rain by putting something in the clouds. But that's not the same as moving the jet stream, which is the world system which controls weather and climate. Um, and of course it, it suits the other side for people on our side to exaggerate what's happening because then people think, oh my God, Bill Gates can control this or that. And we have people saying Bill Gates is Macaulay got all that fog. Well look, this is completely mad. There's no way these things can happen by man. What man can do is very, very small compared with what the sun actually can, does. Can man actually move these storms around then with this art no. business, etc.? No. No. They can't do that. Not really? No. No. Not do that. They can make it rain somewhere where it otherwise wouldn't rain. But I'll give you an example just to show you see the power of the sun compared with Noah. And whatever Noah and NASA want to do, they can't do it. What is Noah? Uh, Noah is the, um, the, the, uh, it's the American weather setup. Yeah. Darling, yeah. Uh, look, you see, look, thousands and thousands of years of data show that solar activity drives climate, right? So one of these graphs is about the solar activity measured by carbon-14. Um, this is the white one. And the black one here is the temperatures. Right? And they correspond, and this goes on for thousands of years. And they're in, a bit in more detail, the same thing. So it's... It's the sun which drives it all. Now, and this happens down to the details of days, or hours even, hours. For example, here, this is the, an earth-facing corona hole. This is the sun in infrared, and these regions here, dark regions, 
where the uh, particles can come break through the solar corona. They come out of there at a million miles an hour and they bathe the whole Earth, right? Now, this one here was what was happening when Storm Dara came over, right? And it was, you know, full on, but a day later, these holes are moved to the right, moved out of the picture or not so central, and then Storm Dara dropped. That but, was last year, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's right. And that's quite a significant one. Um, mm. But people talked about that one a lot. Another one here, and this is really interesting, and it illustrates our rule. This is the rule I've devised from all these researches we've done, and weather action can do long-range weather forecasting, and you can find it on weatheraction.com. Uh, we can even now forecast droughts in China. Okay, this is my geo-hit rules. All major storms and all major earthquakes, these are new ones that are just, you know, really, wow, what's going on? form with major earth-facing corona holes oh, and they've got to be on the half of the sun best magnetically connected to the earth's uh, the events on earth now then this is an example here uh, which is visible on the camera yes, yes. Yeah. Um, this one here see when the earth's big earthquakes happened in syria People said, oh, NASA turned them on. Look, it's all rubbish. It's this absolute, complete, total nonsense. This is what was happening on the day of that earthquake. A gigantic earth-facing corona hole, 20 times the size of the earth, sending particles out a million miles an hour, which cover the whole earth and the magnetosphere around the earth, which is, you know, much bigger than the earth as well, hit that and affect everything. And the magnetic connections uh, will cause, can even cause earthquakes. And this one was happened on the uh, February uh, 2023, right? Okay, big, big one. And that was in the north half of the sun affecting the north half of the earth where Syria is. And that's because we're in a odd sunspot cycle. The best connections are happening then in an odd sunspot. In an even sunspot cycle, 2011, it's the other way around. The south half of the sun affects the north half of the earth. And this one here, huge one in the polar region, that is really magnetically very connected to the upper half of the earth. And that's a corona hole. It's a it? massive corona hole. Yeah. Must be must be 50 times the size of the earth, that one. That gave that huge undersea earthquake and tsunami in Japan on, on uh, my, around about my birthday, March the 10th. 2011 right and that bears out this theory that is the magnetic connections so look the idea that something in nasa you know or NOAA or harp rather a little shed in north america pointing at the ionosphere reflecting down is more significant than this stuff which affects the whole earth you know it's just insane well it is completely insane and there's plenty of people around who just well, we do geo hits. They're doing actually internet hits. That's all through scaring people. Um, okay. Well, I think that's basically the essential point about the sun drives the weather and climate. And if you want to look at the details, that's quite important for carbon dioxide. That is what's happening is that the the um, it's on this graph here the uh, if I hold it like that, maybe, that the carbon dioxide is driven by temperatures. So the temperatures change and then carbon dioxide changes. So the idea that CO2 is driving temperatures is just wrong. The actual data shows the other way around. Mm -hmm. And the reason why CO2 is going up now is an after effect of the medieval warm period. Uh, which is on this other graph here, which people can get online. Medieval. But the medieval warm period, hundreds of years ago, where extra CO2 was subducted because the sea warmed up and, or, uh, well, more CO2 was in the air because it was warm and it came out of the sea. Then it gets subducted in the cold, cold sea off Greenland, and it goes under the sea and comes out at the bottom of the sea, comes out later, hundreds of years later. Mm -hmm. So what we're seeing now is an after effect of the medieval warm period. Nothing to do with mankind at all. Um, 
And when it comes to other sorts of, of greenhouse effects, let's be clear that it is fake physics. You see, carbon dioxide is one thing, but then the powers that be are telling us, oh yes, yes, um, cow fart, methane, or nitrous oxide or whatever, is more dangerous as a greenhouse gas. Well, in their theory it is, but in practice it's a nonsense because the greenhouse effect is fake physics. There's no way that different gases reach different temperatures in a mixture under radiation because each gas that absorbs more infrared also emits more infrared. So the whole theory fails and it also requires that heat moves from the upper atmosphere to the lower atmosphere, which is a nonsense. That is heat moving from a cold area to a warm area. It's a nonsense. So the greenhouse effect is fake physics. And cow farts have no more effect or no less effect than CO2. Their effects are zero. And if, of course, there was any truth in the story about uh, cow farts and animal, and animal farts, then when Britain invaded the Indians in America, which was full of bison, it would have been warm there. But it wasn't, it was very cold there. So it's a nonsense. All these bison have never changed climate and they never will. The whole thing is about control, control, control. And well, what can we do about it? I mean, they're telling us they're trying to inject things in cattle or make them eat things, all of products, to make them fart less. Look, it's just an ideological thing to control you and also, also to to uh, a cash cow, if you cash, excuse me. A cash cow, yes, <laughs> yes. And in a way, that poisoning is related to the games they're playing about telling us they're doing geoengineering, when in fact what they're doing is spraying poisons in the air. Yeah. That is really what geoengineering yeah, is about. So reckon... We should be worried about that, but it's yeah. not changing the weather. The weather story is a cover for people to think, oh, well, they're trying their best, aren't they? It's a cover. It's a cover for something worse, much worse. The, these these uh, poisons, do you reckon, is it true that nanoparticles are included in this stuff? Yes. Yeah, and yeah. that's serious, isn't it? Yeah. Well, there's nanoparticles going into your body in various, by various tricks. Yeah, yeah. And, of course, uh, 5G, 4G can affect these and turn them off and on. That's a whole other thing. But right now, concentrating on the weather issues, there are things they're doing um, to try and make it look like there's a climate crisis. And they've got a policy now of, again, it comes from this climate and nature type of approach of bill. They are um, uh, think, bringing nature back. They say they're rewilding and normalizing flow of rivers. So that means they're stopping dams and stopping dredging. So for the Somerset levels a couple of years ago, there were floods because they stopped the dredging. Prince Charles comes there and says it's climate change. No, it was they stopped dredging. Valencia now, Spain, massive floods, but nothing to do with climate change. They claimed it was, it was a storm, of course, because they have storms every so often. But it's because of all these dams, see this picture? All these blue dots around Valencia have, have represent dams which have been closed in the last two years. So they closed the dams in order just to wait for a some heavy rain and floods will follow. 104 dams around Valencia have been blocked. I mean, that is mean absolutely nice. They've been blocked, how do you mean they've opened them? They've opened them up, I mean, opened open the dams. Yeah. Open the dams. So there's no more. See, it's a fantastic valley area. Really, really fantastic place to live. But now they're ruining it. They're, they're rewilding it, they say. Look, this climate and nature bill is taking us in the same way. So, okay, what can we do about it? Well, one thing is certainly about farmers. Keep going, uh, Peter, so okay. I'm just going to... Certainly about farmers, we've got our Yes Farmers, Yes Food campaign. And what we're doing that is supporting farmers in every way possible, which explains in this, uh, this leaflet. Um, we will, well, uh, it'll, it'll, um, well, we should support farmers uh, selling food directly to the cities, uh, support them in opposing or not agreeing with, with taking down dams. 
we should support them in growing uh, uh, what they want. I mean, that is definitely the, the way forward. Um, there's uh, uh, many other things, but I think the important thing to understand about the Climate Con is it covers lots of stuff. And if all the climate laws in Parliament were repealed, just like that, imagine what would happen. We'd have, it would save the farming crisis, it would give us cheap electricity, because we wouldn't be having all these stupid wind farms, which are very expensive and dangerous, and there's also killing um, and, and uh, upsetting whales because of yeah. the noise under sea, yeah. um, with NULES, ultra low emission zone, and all that nonsense of uh, zoning, would end the carbon footprinting, which of course is one they want to really increase now to control us digitally. And uh, we get rid of smart meters. These are electromagnetic Definitely, things upsetting yeah. people. Yeah. And they're there to save the planet. Yeah. So. All people have to yeah. do is get onto the citizens' advice and then put, they'll put them di directly through to their suppliers. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and com you can put an harassment complaint in and then just ignore them, you know. Oh, okay. It, it, it's not legal. It, it, it's not illegal not to have not leg, illegal to have a smart meter, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, no. an analog is definitely the way forward. Um, absolutely, completely. No, that's what we should uh, we should definitely do. And well, people need to understand that you know everything the other side do, and a lot of people on our side is they exaggerate in the power of humans. And just a little diagram here. This is just so astounding when I found it. This is represents all the living carbon in the world. You know, that's like trees, animals, bacteria, humans, right. This is all of it in this rectangle. All of that is trees. This bit is bacteria, which is 13% uh, of the whole lot. This bit is fungi. And then this bit, is tiny little square there, is animals. All animal life is that much carbon. And this is now exaggerated to this bit, and there is humans. Humans occupy that amount of living carbon, which is a tiny little dot in the corner, yeah. which is 0.01% of the total living carbon. So, you know, whatever we do, the, the trees and bacteria and fungi are actually ruling, right? I mean, obviously, man shouldn't do anything harmful, but, you know, it, this well, stuff yeah. is exaggerated. We need clean air and everything, don't we? we? Do. Yeah, definitely, yeah. We do. So, well, yes, we definitely need clean air, and I'm glad we have clean air now. And trees are the best way of cleaning air, actually, yeah. because they absorb all sorts of things. So, yeah, grow yeah, more yeah. trees, I would say. That's right, yeah. But don't, don't close down farming to do it. No, no. <laughs> well, you know, putting a... a uh, a solar farm on a field is just crazy. I mean, because the field actually uh, makes energy if you want it, because you've got your hay and you can burn it or feed a cow with it or whatever. And that is a lot more efficient than a solar farm. Wasn't anyway. the one blown away not long ago by well, American? It was, it, was, it was one blown away by Storm Dara, funnily <laughs> enough. And people said, <laughs> yeah. people said, that's ironic. Well, no, it was just done by the sun. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, there we are, so... Um, yeah, well, we're running out of time, so I won't... I was going to ask you a bit about 5G, but I won't. Okay. Uh, I'd just like to know how you feel we're heading now. Where, where okay. are we headed? Right. Uh, well, we're heading in dark times, but we are winning in the sense that we're holding them back about all they want to impose. But these things I mentioned just now, the schools and especially the climate and nature bill, are really dangerous, so we're going to have to resist those. Creeping fascism. Yeah. yeah, I think the key thing is united action between all those who understand, getting the message across, setting up action groups in your town or village, and giving out leaflets, supporting the farmers, that is quite a central thing. We've got this graph, this, this yes farmers, yeah, yeah, yeah. yes food, break the climate con. And we got a, uh, a telegram group on that, Yes Farmers, Yes Food, and people who want more on that can go there, or to get lots of contacts, come to my Twitter group, which is at Piers underscore Corbyn, and you can go to weatheraction.com for